Here are some questions I'm often asked. What kind of kimono should I buy first? What obi is good? Where can I buy it? <laughs> and I thought, why not dedicating a whole video for this? So here are my tips, tricks and advice for how to start with kimono. When you speak Japanese and you live in Japan, make sure to also check out my Japanese version of this video because I am also going to share there some tips that will only help when you live in Japan. If you don't speak Japanese, I will upload English subtitles in the very, very soon and near future. So stay tuned just a little. Starting with kimono or building up a kimono wardrobe is like building up a historical or a vintage wardrobe. It won't happen overnight and your style will change with the time and you will have to figure out what you like and what you don't like, what you can work with and what not. So here is just some tips and tricks that can help you to avoid most beginner mistakes that I did when I started kimono seven years ago. So I think the first thing we are all curious about is what kind of kimono and what kind of obi is best to start up. I have two criteria for that and the first one is what kind of occasion are you planning to wear it? For example, when you're taking ikebana classes or tea ceremony classes or koto classes or shamisen classes and you have a show coming up in the near future and you want to wear a kimono, I definitely recommend a semi-formal kimono to start with. Um, I think best should be an irumuji. Irumuji are kimono, they don't have any painted pattern on them, they just have one color. They can have a woven pattern though. And when you have a family crest on the back, this means it's a semi-formal kimono. And this means you can also tie a very, very gorgeous and very formal so-called fukuro obi with it. And when you switch to a not so formal occasion, you can just tie a normal Nagoya obi with it and you just will lower the rank by tying another obi with it. So I think an Inomuji would be like pretty almighty for you in such a case. By the way, my third kimono I ever purchased was an Iromuji with a family crest on the back. So I could wear it for a more formal occasion, but also wear it with a Nagoya Obi for a casual occasion. When you just want to have fun with your kimono, then I would say get the kimono that it's really, really getting you with the pattern and the color and everything. I'm actually wearing my first ever kimono right now and when I saw it in the store I was just oof. <laughs> I loved it so much and it was my size it was perfect this was actually a um, second-hand kimono and recently I don't wear it that often anymore because even my style and taste changed a lot my second criteria is what kind of climate are you living in? When you're in Japan, you might have heard that there are kimono seasons and most Japanese follow them like they're a rule. Um, you wear an avase, which is a kimono with lining from October to May. And then you have in June an unlined kimono, which is called Hitoe. And then in summer you wear yukata or so-called natsumono, which are unlined kimono of a see-through fabric. It can be silk. It can be cotton, it can be linen. And then in um, September, you switch back to hitoe kimono. And then again, avase. By the way, these rules are made up in Tokyo to Tokyo climate. And also, I think more than 20 or 30 years ago, which means it was not that hot like 
right now and it doesn't fit at all the climate in Hokkaido or where I live in Kumamoto. So for example, kimono teachers in Kumamoto, they start to wear unlined kimono hitoe and very, very early. And also we wear summer kimono, natsumono, much, much earlier and even longer than I think the rest of Japan. And this is also something you should include into your considerations about your first kimono because when you live for example in Singapore or Taiwan and it's so hot throughout the whole year I think it doesn't make any sense to get a lined kimono which is very 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 hot but when you for example live in Iceland or even maybe in Germany it maybe could help you when you have more awase than summer kimono because you have just more opportunity to wear them Let's have a zip. <laughs> it's so dry recently. <coughs> like yesterday in my German lesson, I was coughing all the time. This cup is no aditayaki. <laughs> and there's lipstick on it. <laughs> what obi is best to start with? Of course, I recommend buying the obi according to your kimono. So when you have a formal kimono, like for example, a irumuji with a family crest on the back or a furisore with those very, very long sleeves. These are formal kimono, so you would need a formal obi for it. The ultimate formal obi is of course a fukoro obi, I've mentioned before. It's kind of this kind of obi. Can you see it? It's pretty, pretty shiny because most of them are very shiny and have a gorgeous pattern on it so it's very fun to start with those and most of them are longer than four meters which means even if you don't have like a very Japanese silhouette you can kind of find a way to tie it but they are very very heavy and and um, they can be very hard to tie as well so when you start with it you will have to struggle a little more like other people starting with different obi. When you want to start with a casual kimono or a yukata, I definitely recommend a so-called hanhaba obi. Hanhaba means half width and that's because it's half of the width of a fukuro obi. The cool thing about Hanhaba Obi is they are very, very light and most of them are recently also 4 meters long, which means it doesn't really care what kind of silhouette to have with playing around with this. You can tie very, very cute bows with this and if you have a little practice, you can also fake the look of a Otaiko Musubi, which is pretty awesome. So Hanhaba Obi are definitely worth you considering about buying one. But you could also purchase a so-called Heiko Obi, which is kind of this one. You can see the texture is very close to a normal scarf, which means it is very, very, very light. And recently they are also about four meters long because <laughs> there is recently a big change in the Japanese kimono world. Heiko Obi were originally only for men or children. And recently, there are also Heiko Obi made for women. They have very, very nice and modern pattern on it. Recently, also more traditional pattern. When you tie this, you can have very, very cute and nice voluminous bows with it. And because it's just a scarf, it's pretty easy to tie. Plus, as this has the same width of a Fukuro Obi or like a Nagoya Obi, you can tie most famous traditional knots with it, like an otaiko, and it won't really look like it's a heiko obi. Of course, when people get closer to you, they will kind of figure it out, but who cares? It just looks awesome. So I think heiko obi is pretty almighty for us. Where can you buy kimono to start with? Yeah, we have a lot of online stores that sell second-hand kimono. Um, I don't really recommend starting with vintage or second-hand kimono 
when you don't know a lot about kimono and we, when you don't know your size and when you really just started up from scratch with wearing a kimono I think it can be very very hard when you don't have a kimono that fits you very well I think Japan objects is a very good place to search for at first they are specialized for the foreign market which means they have bigger size kimono and they are all pret a porter which means they are made um, to a certain kind of size and they kind of fit most silhouettes of human beings and I think all of the kimonos and yukata are polyester or cotton which are way easier to handle for beginners because silk kimono really make a lot of work. They also have a nice lineup of obi in their shop. For example, also Hanhaba and Heiko obi that I really, really recommend for beginners. Where is my kimono wardrobe after seven years of kimono life? Um, I started very, 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 very small um, by wearing kimono two days a week. So I didn't care about having too many kimono but I wanted to wear kimono more and more and more and I really enjoy dressing seasonally. So I recently have for about 50 kimono. And some people say, oh my gosh, it's so many. And others say, oh, it's lesser than I thought. <laughs> I have a lot of formal kimono. I have two furisode. No, I have three furisode. And I have a lot of homongi and iromoji I can wear for formal occasions. Um, of course, because I wear kimono every day, I have a lot of, lot of lots of casual kimonos and yukata. I have like at least four kimono for one season, and then I have kimonos I can wear on rainy days and kimonos I can wear throughout the year. Yeah, I think I am at a good point where I don't really, really have to buy kimonos all the time to live every day. But I would love to have just some more to stay as fashionable and fancy as I try to be in my kimono. My task recently is to wear kimono really every day, which means also on those days when I don't go outside and I just want to stay in my pyjamas. I am recently searching for very cheap secondhand yukata which don't really have to be my size because I just want to wear them at home as a pyjama. You sometimes maybe see it on my Instagram when I wear this black yukata I also wore in my how to make a um, edition DIY. This is actually a kimono I wear only at home. You know right now when it comes to the end of my video my voice is pretty smooth <laughs> it's not we're fine hopefully this video could help you if it did leave me a thumb up and if you have any further questions feel always free to comment i will always come back to you and answer you directly in a comment or in another video and when you feel like sticking around here feel free to click the subscribe button and maybe also the bell, so you won't miss any of my new videos. And I think I talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye!